Hey everybody, welcome back. Episode 4, Getting Out of Debt. Uh, that'll be the topic of today's episode. Uh, we're going to touch on investing, retirement, I'm in debt, what do I pay off first? And if you search anything, anywhere, you're always going to come across Dave Ramsey. You're going to come across the debt snowball versus the debt avalanche. And I'm going to briefly go over what the difference between the two is, the pros and the cons um, of both uh, Dave Ramsey, spoiler alert, um, he promotes the debt snowball. And I'll go through both. I'll give you my advice on both. I'll tell you what I use, and then I will let you know which one I recommend. Um, this article, uh, I will put the link to this particular article in the description below so you can read it for yourself if you want to. Um, the short version is they have a comparison here. So the debt avalanche, it doesn't matter what your balance is. It could be $10, $20, $200,000. It does not matter the amount that you owe. All that matters is the interest rate. You're going to pay down whatever has the highest interest rate first. So normally your 20 plus percent rates are majority going to be credit cards. These are the ones that kill you. 20% on a $20,000 credit card, that's a lot of money every year just for those. Do some quick math for you. 20000 times that, that's four thousand dollars a year that you're paying in interest that's three hundred and thirty three dollars in interest you're paying every month if you're making the minimum payments well no that's the minimum payments could be even less than the interest so you could in fact never be able to pay this off without chunking it down some way somehow it's it's bad now that's why you want to attack the highest rate first. So let's say same thing. We'll make this $20,000. Let's say we had $20,000 on a, a car loan. Well, that's at 0. 0.4, four and a quarter percent. That's 850 for the year. That's $70 a month in interest. So the difference alone between that 330 versus 70 yeah, get me out of this credit card. This rate is killing me. Absolutely killing me. 850 a year versus 4000. I think I'll pay this down and save that $3200 in interest. Let me get out of this as quick as possible. So, the pro well, that's the good side is the debt av avalanche is going to save you the most amount of money in the long run. But it's a $2,000 bill. That's pretty rough. So you're pretty much going to be minimum payments on the car, the car, student loan, personal, all get minimum payments. Credit card, every little extra dollar that you make every day goes right to paying this credit card off. So... I'm surprised they don't do a, uh, a little thing about the debt snowball in a um, in a spreadsheet here. So this is their pros and cons. The snowball, I'm just going to go off the same chart here. You're going to pick the smallest debt. So you're not going to care about the interest rate. You want to say, all right, I've got $2,000 left on this car loan. Yeah, I know it's only 4%. But once I get this $2,000 paid off, let's say, for instance, uh, this was my car payment, and it was $400 a month. Well, if I can pay this off, I just freed up $400 a month that can go towards whatever the next bill is going to be. So in this case, with the debt snowball, I'm going to grab this extra $400 a month, and now I'm going to start attacking this personal loan at $9,000. I'm not even caring about the interest rate. I'm looking at the overall cash flow that I'm able to generate and start knocking these things off. 
So that's a way to free up some cash flow to attack other things. In the in the long run, it's going to cost you more money to do the debt avalanche, uh, the debt snowball. It's you're going to pay more in interest, but you're going to free up a little bit of cash flow up front. And generally, going smallest to biggest, it's going to kind of keep you motivated. And Dave Ramsey, he has you know teams that spend millions of dollars on research and what is the most you know important way and it's all emotional and psychological and most people that choose to do the debt avalanche they say yeah it's 20 percent but it's a twenty thousand dollar bill if i've got five hundred dollars extra a month to throw at this it's still going to take me years you know months to years to pay off my first um credit card to free up some cash flow so a lot of people get just emotionally defeated when they're trying to tackle a bigger debt first. So if you go down to uh, the pros and co uh, cons here, they're pretty much going to say, I'll let you guys read this. Um, the most of this, it, it's tough. Like this one here, will there be light at the end of the tunnel? It does take you longer. So you have to stay motivated. For me personally, um, I use the debt avalanche, but I also use tools that make this a little more palatable. So for instance, this credit card at 20%. Well, I had a home equity line of credit. So what did I do? I paid off the 20,000 with my home equity line of credit, which at the time was somewhere between four and 5%. It did creep up eventually to 6%, but I was hammering every extra penny to that at the 6% price tag. I have a car that was at 5% and then everything under that were all just credit card cash balance uh, transfers between 2 and 3%. So I prioritized by using credit cards as tools instead of just swiping and buying whatever I want. Um, that's not always the case. Not everybody has access to these tools. Um, and in that case, a lot of times the snowball is the better way to go. Um, my one friend who shall remain nameless has some high interest rate credit cards. He's got a couple car leases and th there's nothing he can do. He's stuck. He can't, he has no tools. The credit's gone. No one's going to give him another card. So he is stuck with this like $4,000 interest a year. He's just burning in money. So he unfortunately is stuck. Um, if you have those tools, absolutely take, it, uh, take advantage of the debt avalanche. List it by interest rate, uh, highest to lowest. If you don't have access to those tools, the debt snowball might be better for you because you want to free up that cash flow. Pay off that quick little, you know, $2,000 balance. Get that out of there. Free up $400 a month if you're if that was your payment there. And then attack the next uh the next smallest one. It does give you motivation. It does keep you going. I personally um I'll watch uh episodes of uh on YouTube Dave Ramsey um, has like a whole uh, team that does videos as well um, just to stay motivated. You know, if you find yourself kind of, you know, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere, watch some of their videos. They're very motivational. There's callers that call in all the time. And you might have some people that are in the same boat as you. There might be some people that are worse off, better off, or maybe they're a step or two ahead you know of where you're at right now so they this helps me enough to keep my motivation high enough that I'm not seeing really any results with my avalanche really just until this past month um, we paid off in April after almost a year we got the home equity line of credit paid off in May we just paid off um, one of the cars so those were two monthly um, 
debts that were paid off, but part of that I did use as my credit card tools by doing a balance transfer at a much lower rate. So right now I'm actually caught up with all of my credit card balance transfers. So I you pay that interest up front, so there's no advantage to paying it off early, and that's why you'll see in my simple account I've got almost $10,000 in savings, but now that's at 2%. So if my balance transfers were at 2%, 3%, I'm almost making a break even on that. So when they are due, now I can pay them off in full and just start saving up to pay off the next one. Um, I am, again, I'm 35 years old. I've gotten in a lot of debt throughout the years. Um, you know, we don't always do the smartest things. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of those things. Back when I was in high school, late 90s, uh, early 2000s, we had the tech bubble. Yours truly was trading stock on computers in my high school. Don't ask me how, <laughs> but I was able to make my little $2,000 life savings grow to 4000 and then it all got blown away. One bad trade, um, the tech bubble burst. I lost pretty much the one particular stock I was in. I was not diversified at all. 75% drop overnight, boom, all the money gone. So what do you do? You panic, you sell out of it, and you lick your wounds. Um, next mistake I made was my one of my jobs. Uh, I worked for the state, and I was paying in for the um, uh, retirement pension plan they had offered, which, great, signed me up. I had two years paid in. Then I got a different job, and I started working in New York, and... I said, well, I'm working in New York. I'm not going to work in New Jersey ever again. And I'm looking to buy a home. So I can just cash that pension out. Many people always touch their 401ks. They borrow against it, loans, etc. I did the same thing. Pulled out. I had maybe $6,000 in this pension plan. Pulled out 6000 before you know you get hit with a upfront administrative you know 10 percent penalty they grab 600 bucks off the top then it gets taxed as regular income for that year so then it bumps my income up and magically i've got a new job making more money so now that money's taxed at anywhere between tax laws all just changed but basically 30 something percent on that all I remember is I took out 6000 in a loan, or not a loan, just a cash out. By the time I actually had the cash money in my hand, it was like 3500 bucks. So, yeah, it helped me a little bit towards that down payment on that house, but it wasn't proper planning. You know, there's a method to getting ahead in life. And, you know, just like when you're a baby, you got to crawl before you can stand, before you can walk, before you can run. And a lot of people try to do everything all at once. And, you know, I've got retirement going. I'm saving for a house. I just bought a new car. It, it, you, there's only so many things you can do. Um, and generally, the more things you try to do at once, you fail at a lot more. Instead of just staying focused in on one thing and getting through it. So going back in time, I wish that instead of investing, I was saving. There's two very big differences between investing and saving. But if I saved all of my money for that next step in my life, which is I wanted that house, I would have saved my 20% down so I didn't have to pay mortgage insurance and all of that other stuff. That's what I should have done looking back on it versus trying to cash out retirement funds to try to raise enough money to not pay that mortgage insurance and then you had to do a buyout it cost me ten thousand dollars to do that so all just that one mistake of touching my retirement and having to do a pmi buyout 
cost me roughly fourteen thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars just because I didn't do things in a proper order or you know the order that I kind of preach now um, and a lot of people don't know that you say well you get the argument all the time is well I could have put it in the market and I could have made XYZ money that's great you could also lose two-thirds of it <laughs> look at the tech bubble look at 2007 right now we're at all-time highs as well what's gonna happen tomorrow we don't know nobody knows but if you're saying I'm gonna be buying a house in the next year or two are you comfortable putting 50,000 in the stock market and that's my 20 percent down on a home and you wake up a year from now and it's worth 20 30 that's not a smart thing to do when that's the difference between saving and investing if you're saving just put it in that like two percent savings account I showed in the previous episode just use your income to build the savings for a major major purchase like that once you get that purchase out of the way you're in the home you have no other debt everything else is paid off then we can start talking about investing retirement that kind of stuff um, so moving forward we talked about the tech bubble we talked about pulling out of retirement I'll talk about another fun one Bitcoin I'm in IT I know how to mine it uh, I ran out I bought a whole bunch of computers video cards custom build my own mining rig um, bought ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin it was uh, shot all the way up to like twenty thousand dollars the end of 2017 I think um, and then what happened it was uh, a lot of corruption a lot of in uh, kind of falsification with a couple companies that were with it and then it plummets and it drops it drops down to ten thousand drops it drops eight thousand I said you know what that's a long way down from twenty thousand maybe now is a good time to buy so it's at 8000 I buy $10,000 worth. And then what does it do? Drops down to 6000 And I say, okay, well, um, I know I'm heavily in debt, but I really believe in this. It's going to happen. Next thing you know, <laughs> takes about six more months, drops to 3000 but I buy in more at 6000 So now I've got $16,000, $17,000 invested in Bitcoin that I had to wait until just last month I was finally able to break even and get my money back out of it of course now it's uh, about 12,000 but the the point that I'm trying to make is I had all of this excess debt and here I took seventeen thousand dollars off the table that could have gone towards my debt I would have guaranteed a 6% savings just by paying down my debt especially for those who have those high interest credit cards 20% <laughs> you could have just taken off the table with that $17,000 almost would have cleaned up that one example card here in full I had to wait another year so now that $17,000 at 6% ended up costing me closer to 18 a little bit more thousand dollars just to break even so I had to try to wait even longer for the price to go up to try to get in so there's a time and a place for investing you wanna get your debt out of the way first you know I'm 35 now anyone who's in their 20s you get that mindset well I can put it in the market and I'm gonna make 10 percent a year I can tell you right now when you actually start investing in the market you never get that 10 percent it's everybody else but you magically gets that 10 percent number from somewhere <laughs> but it's never happened to me and i've tried a million and one different ways um next topic to talk about um crash in 2007 yours truly i had for that 40 50 000 saving for a house crash happens where'd that 50 000 go down to 20 down to 30 had to sell it because I'm ready to buy a house I didn't have the luxury of waiting you know that three to four years for all of that money to come back and start regrowing again 
you know, also I didn't have the cash on the sideline to take that as an opportunity if I wasn't buying a home. Um, it's tough. Investing is not uh, the easiest thing in the world. We'll go over uh, investing in later episodes. Um, but those were just mistakes I made with not getting on a roadmap and a game plan and sticking to it. It ends up costing you more in the long run. Um, I'll end this episode with saying, uh, again, I recommend both. It depends on what kind of person you are. Um, if you kind of need that carrot on the stick and you need the motivation um, to stay focused in it, the depth snowball, right up your alley. If you are into finance and you're really good at looking at the, the bigger picture and the interest rate and you don't want to pay that extra money in interest and you know if your first bill takes you two years to pay off then so be it as long as you can look at the big picture and you say you know what this is looking good you know dean taught me how to use mint and i'm looking at all my accounts and i'm just focusing on my net worth as opposed to what these little bills are left i'm looking at the big big picture then you're safe you know you're safer with the debt avalanche if you need just that motivation like i said do a search for dave ramsey watch any of his shows they are inspirational some of them are extremely sad and they're very very informative uh that's all across the board but absolutely recommend his stuff um even though i will uh you know and and again there's uh talking about getting out of debt he has the baby step plan for the product he pitches and sells it will work for anybody that's why he's so successful with it it's not the most cost savings approach um but they've done a ton ton of research into just again the way everybody thinks and feels with their money and through their research and everything his plan absolutely will work um and that will cover any any education level any income level it absolutely will work um any comments questions issues uh any stories that you have feel free to email or comment below uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you next time